Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to call to order the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners for a special meeting today, March the 12th, 2014. Um, I would like to do a reminder, thank you to everyone that is here today. If you have a personal device, if you will please put it on vibrate or silent, we would appreciate that so that it does not go off during the meeting. Um, commissioners, the first item that we have is approval of the agenda. You have the agenda in front of you. So may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, the first item that we have is discussion with uh, Kannapolis City Schools. Um, commissioners, let me ask, because I'm, I'm not 100% clear. Um, do you, you have on your iPads the request, if you will go to the third page, um, you have the resolution from Kannapolis City Schools um, concerning the bond referendum. And then on the next page, page four, um, there is a total dollar amount with a listing of projects and on page five you will see it's broken out into estimates. Do any of you need, would you like to have a presentation from anyone at, from Kannapolis City Schools or would you just, or do we want to, I mean we've discussed these numerous times. Do you, do you need a presentation to go back over these and these numbers or there questions on these or do we just want to talk about this and, and how do you want to proceed? So you might have a preference. I, I would like some feedback from Kannapolis City Schools as to whether or not they have information they'd like to present to us or if they feel they need to add to anything that's been said before. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Um, so I'm not certain. Um, I know that this was kind of a rush to have everybody here today. We do want to appreciate. I want to say thank you very much to everybody that's here. Community College is on spring break, so um, they have people who are getting a well-deserved vacation. And there's a superintendent's meeting that some are at and some are not at. <laughs> so um, I appreciate everybody being here and taking the time out. So Kannapolis City Schools, I don't know who all would like to come up. You have a number of people. Um, if you've got some board members here, if you want to, we don't have quite enough chairs right there, but if y'all, come on up, come on up. Um, board chairs coming up. If, Todd, if you will do us the honor of at least introducing the board members that are here with you today. And we do appreciate you all being here. Certainly. I'm uh, proud to have uh, Board Member Charles Mitchell, Board Member Doris Buchanan, Assistant Superintendent Dr. Chip Buckle, Will Crabtree, and Dr. Pam Kane. And I'm Todd Adams. Okay, we have um, on our screen here the, um, the estimates that you have for us. Is there anything that you want to, that you provided for us? Is there anything that you want to Tell us about. Yes, uh, yes, I would. I'll just, I'll just let you proceed. How's that? That'd be great. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. We met on Monday night, um, and at Monday night's meeting, after being in attendance at the meeting here last week, um, and hearing the total request for the bonds being out at about $107 million, we understood that that probably was going to be higher than anyone had a stomach for issuing a bond at. And, we want to go back and we've been giving you a list of projects in priority order, but we wanted to take one final look at that list and make sure that that was in the exact order that we wanted it to be in, knowing that some things would probably have to come off the table. And so we met and we made a little bit, made a few revisions from the list you have here. And I believe Will has provided you with the updated list. Provided, I provided Dan with it today over it if you want me to yeah would you like to go for that sure okay. can, we, uh, can the, we do it off of this one so that everybody I can. can kind of okay that mm -hmm. would be great thank you the the overall dollar amount and the projects did not change it's just the uh the order of them so it's still everything we've been talking about uh the middle school would remain at number one and jackson park gym edition would remain at number two Number three would now become uh, the A.L. Brown construct new press box, replace aging track site work at stadium. The number four would now be system-wide parking lot repair. The number five would now become repair and renovation of A.L. Brown, but only with A, B, and C. A being renovate the band and choir building, B being renovate the bullet gym locker rooms and bleachers, and C, renovate Cannon Gym. D became 
number three. So we took it out and placed it as a number unto itself. Number six. And then six would be uh, Woodrow Wilson Gym Edition. Still for a total of 31135000 The individual pro projects still remain at the total amount. So the only thing that changed would be the priority that the board give them, give, gave them. I'm sorry. Um, is there, do you want to give us any reasons, Todd, on why you chose to reorganize, or is there any, any other details that you want us to have? The, obviously, the middle school has been number one for a long time, and that's why it is our number one priority. Jackson Park has a multi-purpose room that, is, is for, as far as multi-purpose rooms go, it's, it's very it, small. It, it, it's very small. It's actually part of the cafeteria, so it, it, it pulls triple duty. It works as a gym, an auditorium, and a cafeteria. Mm -hmm. It probably works best as a cafeteria, and the re other right. two are marginal uh, as to how they operate. Uh, the Woodrow Wilson gym, we moved that to the bottom of the list for a number of reasons, one of which being that the school is in Rowan County and the building would be completely in Rowan County. So that, that would be the reason we moved that to the bottom. They still need that. They have a multi-purpose room there. It works better as a multi-purpose room than the Jackson Park multi-purpose room. But for today's considerations, we, we thought it would be best to move that to the bottom of the list. Uh, looking at A.L. Brown, there's a, the stadium is a priority for us for a number of reasons. It is a centerpiece of the community. It's used a lot outside of football season, and obviously it's used for track and field and soccer and all the other athletic events, but it's also used in the community quite a bit. The par handicap parking there is... I think we have four or six spaces, is that correct, Will? It, it is. It's, it's uh, certainly inadequate the way it's set up now. And so, so handicap parking is very short. Um, handrails are – This handrails and steps in that stadium are very interesting. It was built in 1957. The stair treads are at a normal pace about halfway down, and you have handrails about halfway down. Then the handrails stop, and the stair treads double in height. At the same time, the – handrail stop so uh, if you watch people at an event there they really struggle up and down those steps and we do a lot of events there that require being on the field for the participants uh, like uh, the relay for life event we have and when people park it's difficult for some of them to try to get down those steps uh, so that would be part of the renovation of the stadium the press box was built in 1957 and it is long outlived its life the rubberized track surface will may be able to speak to that a little better than I can, but it, it, is, it is aging and needs replacement. It, it does. We, we consulted with, uh, with the maintenance department and had them look at it, and uh, we are starting to see some, uh, some wear in it that's, that's cause for concern that's going to have to be replaced. Um, also at the stadium, we have a lot of drainage issues, uh, especially uh, in the area where people come into the stadium and congregate so uh, we're going to have to have to address those off uh, with that uh, one of the things that uh, that, that kind of hurts us with uh, the, the stadium in itself is all of our sports have to use that field so uh, the field itself uh, gets a lot of use so uh, the field is also going to need some 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 upgrades and looking at so, so knowing that that was an, an important piece and looking at the other projects that we had initially grouped together with the repair and renovations at A.L. Brown, we decided to pull that out. And then as you look at what remains there under the repair and renovations at A.L. Brown, those are also prioritized in ABC order. So inside of that, the band room would be number one, Bullock Gym number two, and Cannon Gym number three. So. Uh, if, if there's any consideration given to that project, those pieces, if they needed to be removed, we would ask for them to be removed from the bottom up because they are prioritized as well. Uh, parking lot repair uh, was moved to number four. Uh, and Will, I'd like for you to speak to parking lot repair. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the, the parking lot repair uh, refers mainly to the large parking lots across the street from A.L. Brown. Uh, we refer to them as the senior and junior parking lots. Um, 
they're rather large parking lots and we're experiencing um, a lot of waves and some sink sinkholes within them um, they've got a lot of age on them and I'm pretty sure they were were, were built on fill when they were built so uh, it's going to require a, a total renovation of those and probably removing a lot of bad soil and replacing it with good soil before we can even start to to replace that um, you know normally I wouldn't try to put a, a, a paving project you know on this we go with the capital but this is such a large one uh, and it could run into such such a large cost we felt the need to put it on on this format dr. Kane is there anything you'd like to add no just that I just want to remind you that the projects are all the same and the money's the same we just really took a look at prioritizing because we felt that was really important that's the only difference <coughs> Um, commissioners, do you have any questions concerning the uh, request from Kannapolis City Schools? I have a couple of questions, and, and thank you very much for coming. We sure appreciate it. And um, I have been in contact with Will this week and, and both of you as well. And um, I, I appreciate all the effort that you make to, to get us the information that we need. Um, as you know, I have talked some about coming up with a cash for schools plan. And I think one of the detriments of that plan was it created about $208 million in cash over the next 10 years um, to fund schools with cash. But the timing didn't necessarily work well for, for you all with respect to um, your middle school. Um, that plan provided funds in about years four, I believe, for your school, and you have a much more urgent need for that. And, and through conversations, we were able to, to talk about what your needs were. So one of the things that I looked at um, was instead of doing a 20-year bond, um, we have all of the cash available within that plan, but it's just the timing is not right. So I looked at taking the middle school and borrowing the money for that on a very short-term basis, a five-year plan, uh, next year. So that would guarantee you the funds uh, available next year to build your school. $22 million is what I looked at, but um, Will and I were in the process of talking about different numbers, and, and that will be close. Um, now, what would happen is we would get that money for you, pay it all back within five years, and then through this plan we would have about $22 million in additional capital through 2022 to fund um, smaller, um, lower cost priorities. Um, and I had really had incomplete conversations with you by the time that your meeting was on Monday and the newspaper had written about that today. Um, I wanted to come to you and, and ask you. If we could, well, it, and let me tell you the benefit of this. Um, under a straight 20-year bond at 4.75% interest, to pay back $22 million is going to cost us $12.3 million. That's the 20-year payback. Um, I had our um, Deputy County Manager, Pam Dubois, once run some numbers for me last week, and she got with our, with our finance expert, and she said that under the five-year plan, we could borrow the $22 million, pay it back within five years, and it would cost us $800,000. So it would literally be about 6% of the interest cost. We could save $11.5 million by doing that. Is that something that you would consider withdrawing your bond resolution if we could guarantee you funding under uh, a scenario like that? Jason, I, I, I'm the chair of the board but we are a board of five and I, I can't speak for our board my what, what I you and I have had some conversations and I've, I've talked around uh, what I can tell you is if 2015 is too late really probably for that funding because we would need to see it sooner because you, you guys may be obligating a future board at that point in time right. which which I don't think you could do um, we, we would need the funding to be sooner. Um, we would need some guarantees of that funding. And I'd like to see another project or two maybe in with that. And then I think we'd be willing to, we'd be willing to talk about it as a board. We, we'd be open to that. But, but I, can't, I can't sit here as one person and say I can do that. Sure. And I didn't mean uh, calendar year. Uh, 2015 I meant fiscal year 2015 so that okay. would be starting um, the way that I was thinking that this would work is we would make you some guarantee um, that we would 
uh, initiate that financing by the by the end of November, which would make sure that this board was the board that uh, got you the financing. And one of the things I really like about the plan is we are taking out the financing, but we have come up with a plan to pay that back, and we are not sticking a board 20 years down the road with tens of millions of dollars of debt and, and tens of million dollars of interest payments. So, I mean, it's something that we would take responsibility for that and, and make that guarantee to you. But if we could make you that guarantee that you would get that financing within the, within the 2014 year, that would be something that you'd be willing to look at. I know we're all operating uh, against a clock as far as deciding what goes on the bond package and how it would work. Uh, I think we would, we'd be willing to call a board meeting or have a board meeting. I think our next schedule when we have a budget retreat on the 25th mm -hmm. that's on the books, that would be some time we would be able to discuss that possibly. Uh, don't know how that fits into the overall timeline. Um, we, we want to be good citizens of Cabarrus County. If that means saving Cabarrus County money, we'd be willing to do that. Uh, same time, I don't know what implications that has on the Cabarrus County budget, and that's not any. Th that's sure. not any of my. Uh, that's not my field. So uh, that all be something you, you guys would have to work out. But if that's something that works with the board, with your board, that's something we're willing to listen to. Thank you. I, I appreciate your accommodating us with that because it's a it's a little bit different than something we've been talking about. But really, there's potential to save the county a tremendous amount of funds and. That would, uh, I mean, the savings on that would almost build a, uh, another school, depending on what size school that you built. So that would be tremendous. We, we, we need a middle school. <laughs> we need a middle school, and we need those other projects as well. Uh, and and we, we appreciate all of your help in, in how we're going to get to that point. How, whether that point is through the bond, whether that point's through short-term financing or cash, whatever that is, we need those facilities. So we're, we're willing to listen. Let me ask a question. Um, Jason, when you say we would make a guarantee, what would that look like? Define that for me. Well, the way that I envision, envision that is us voting as a board to initiate or to um, whatever we would need to do in order to make you feel comfortable that by the end of November 30th um, that you would have financing in place for the Kannapolis Middle School. And, and I really think that that would end up benefiting Kannapolis um, because you would get the funds far before you get them on a bond. So if urgency is an issue, um, you would have money available starting this year, whereas under the bond, I think we're looking at maybe the springtime of 2016. So you could get started on that, and, and it would really get you going much quicker, I believe. So for us, just for clarification, it would be that the board, this, this board would vote that for the five-year for yes. cash? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, the only question I have for you is um, what is the capacity level for the new middle school? Uh, yes. uh, the capacity level will be uh, 1,100 students for the new middle school. Okay. And I know we have discussed this a number of times. I just want to make sure everyone was aware of that. And um, as I said, that's the only question I do have. But I, I do appreciate um, your cooperation and your transparency throughout this process. Uh, you guys, I'd compliment your uh, system staff and also your board and getting us the information that you know we have needed and uh, you know we've been able to review this and ask questions and have conversations so um, I really do appreciate your cooperation and, um, and understanding. A couple questions uh, from a timing standpoint um, you know I think we've talked about the need for this middle school for quite a while you know I have no reservations about that uh, I am totally in favor of accomplishing that project and getting it underway. A um, you know, couple of considerations, you know, and um, we do have some, some time restrictions on, on the bond issue. Um, and staff, uh, please chime in if I've got it correct. But I've, I've got down a date of March the 27th <clears throat> for local government commission approval. Um, is that right? I don't think it's approval, but a phone conversation. Is that just what we were tentatively? Yeah. Where we would all need to be in agreement. Talking this about, what I understand. Uh, <coughs> you know, if, if, if the bond request were withdrawn, uh, then this funding decision would be 
strictly a function of our budget as to how we determined that we would have the funds available to, to cover that debt service. Um, if that didn't go the way you wanted it to go and we had withdrawn the bond, then we'd be back at zero starting all over again. Uh, if we go forward with the bond and give the, the voters an opportunity to express their opinions about how they feel about these school construction projects, there is no requirement that we ever use the funds from that bond. We could approve a bond and never draw down any money from it if we found a more attractive way to finance these projects. So it seems to me that would give us the greatest flexibility. And I think most importantly, we do not want to put your project at risk. We do not either. Um, we do not. So, you know, there are a couple different ways. I mean, obviously, your job is to, to let us know what you need and demonstrate that need, and I think you've done that. Our job is to figure out how to do it. That's right. Um, and and that, that's kind of what I said. We, we need a middle school, and how, how we arrive at that, that's we, we just we need it and how you guys decide that we arrive at that then that's another yeah, thing and, so. and I guess my other question was from a timing standpoint what um, and will may be best able to answer this you know when you get the money when construction begins you know and of course you've given us good information about the numbers coming through the elementary grades uh, at you know kind of what timeline are we looking at when you you're sort of drop dead date when you need to have these kids sitting at desks I think the uh, enrollment that I uh, presented was uh, 2016 is when we would need you know to have a building ready um, that would be in the fall of the, 2016 yeah. correct uh-huh uh -huh. um, as far as a timing standpoint, we're really starting from ground zero. We have the property, so we don't have to worry about that. But we have not really, we, we haven't hired an architect or an engineer. Uh, we still have to do uh, a traffic study because we do have a couple of traffic issues that may present themselves as a part of this construction. So uh, all of that with the design phase and the studies that are going to have to be done, uh, it's going to take a lot of lead time to do that. So we, we are pretty constrained as, as, as far as a time period right now. So right. The, the, you know, the quicker we could get the funding, the better to make that happen by 2016. Right. Thank you. So it really sounds to me like you need the funding before the bonds would actually go in effect for this middle school. I, I think, you know, first of all, we'd take the funding whenever, whenever we could get it. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but uh, we need a middle school. <laughs> but yes, that would be an accurate description. We, you know, if, if we could get it tomorrow, it would be great. Right. So. If there's a way to do it and save money, uh, I'm in favor of saving all we can. And, and the less interest you pay on anything is money back in your pocket. And, uh, uh, you know, if we can do it with, we can't do it with cash because uh, we don't have it. But uh, uh, if we could do it on a five-year uh, loan, would save us a lot of money, which I don't know. Anybody know what the interest rate on that five-year loan was going to be? Uh, Pam's not here, but I think she said it's close to 5%. I think that was what their <coughs> estimate was. So whichever way you, we can get you the money the best way is the way I'm going to do it. What, what would the interest rate on the bond, what, what's the prediction as to what that would be? I'm sorry. That was my answer. My answer was five percent. The um, the it's bonds. The bond. That, that the bond was about five percent. The bond was about five percent. So, what's the interest rate on the short-term financing? Uh, Pam did not give me the specific rate. She gave me the payback, and it was mm -hmm. eight hundred thousand dollars interest paid back over five years total. It's much lower. I mean, because on that short-term deal, you pay a much smaller rate. Um, mm -hmm. So you get a time saving, but also it's a much lower rate. We. We don't know what the interest rates on the bonds would be because we don't know what the term would be, and we don't know what the what the amount would be. Uh, it could be five, ten, twenty, fifteen years, and we don't know what the amount that you would approve. Right. 
You've been using an estimate, though, in all of our plans, haven't you been? <coughs> um, I'm almost I'd positive that I'd Pam have to told talk me to, about 4.95%. Uh, we can have Ms. Wilson come up. She's the one who did the projections in the five-year plan. Is that what you're referring to? In the five-year plan that we've been using. I, I think there's a, uh, an interest rate assumed in that plan. Just grab, grab yeah. a microphone. Good afternoon. What we did for the five-year plan is we used what we what we got on our refunding plus 150 basis points. So that's what we used in the five-year plan as an estimate. What was that number? They actually went out at what four? Gosh, you'd think you'd remember so that. It's just from September till now. It was probably close to the five percent. That's what y'all were calling from here. Yeah, I think it, I think it, it would be near the five percent. That that's what was used in the projection of the five-year plan several months back. Right. 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 Um, have you got an idea of what the market looks like right now, or Mr. Naglo, do you have an idea what what it's looking like right now? Um, well, rates are low. Uh, they have been for quite a while. I think those are okay. <laughs> Can, can you, for our purposes, can you introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. Thank I'm you. Joe Knuckle, Piper Jaffrey. Um, I've done a number of financings for, for Cabarrus County over the years. It's uh, probably in the 3% the or so range at this point. Rates are still low. Uh, I think for the five-year plan, we were estimating about 150 basis points above that, 1.5%. I apologize for the buzzwords. We, we tend to use them a lot. Um, but there's a, the thought process is if there's pressure for interest rates to go up, at some point they have to go up. They can't stay at the levels they are now. So the prudent thing, the safe thing to do is to assume if you're not issuing for, say, two years, the spring of 2016, how high could they go? Well, they can go up quite a bit, but we were estimating around 1.5%, which gets you to roughly the 5%, which I believe, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think that's about where they were being run at the time. They're lower than that now. Okay, thank you. Um, I have two questions. One, um, have you had conversations with Rowan County Commissioners about funding for any of your facilities? You mentioned, uh, I think, the Woodrow the, Wilson is completely in Rowan County. Have yes, you had any conversations with them about not, funding? Not to this point, but that is, that's, up, that's forthcoming. We, we're working that direction, yes. I, don't, I have no idea what they're discussions have been on their yeah. for what they're doing in their yeah, county so I, I didn't know yeah. if that had been something that you had brought yeah, up that's it's a little different up there right now okay and the other question I had was um, and please correct me if I'm wrong that um, the boosters have been doing a fundraiser for the stadium to do some renovations at the stadium they have and can you it, tell us would that very feed into the it, what you moved up the that they uh, they have and if you drive by L. Brown and there's a thermometer out there that'll give you the numbers and it, it has met limited success. You, I don't know the number. Do you know the number, Will? It's, it, it's, I do it, not know recently. It's, no, it's, it's, I think it's probably below 100,000. I'm sure it's well below 100,000 and I feel sure that um, we, if that's a project that we're going to go forth with on the bond, we could find a way to get the booster club to work something in. Maybe it'd be something that and I'm, I'm shooting straight from the hip here, okay, and I can't speak for other people, but it, it may be something that uh, would be something nicer than we would have put on the bond, maybe some, f some piece of equipment that we wouldn't have otherwise, and that booster club can use that money for it. But Will maybe can speak to that better than I can. So. Yes, I, I have no doubt uh, that the booster club would put any funds that they have uh, raised or collected thus far into this project so uh, now like I said to what level that is right now I don't know I don't think it's a great deal but uh, I don't think there would be any problem with them you know putting everything they have towards this project because I know it's a, a very high priority it for them. Is. I wasn't exactly certain what um, items they were thinking about I knew there was a fundraiser I just didn't know what items they were thinking about I didn't know if the press the, box or the track their, their, their initial their initial plan came in three phases. Uh, phase one was a press box, 
uh, new entryway, concourse area work. The new press box would include a concession location because the concessions are aged as well uh, and would include some work behind the scoreboard to get a, a path back to the visitor side because that's all that's unpaved and can be very muddy right now. Uh, phase two was turf and some track work and then phase three was a field house. Their, their plan called for about five million dollars. Right. And that's certainly not what we're, we, we, we cut the field house out, we cut a number of other things out to get it to the 1.7. Booster Club plans five million. That's, and that's not certainly what we're bringing to you at all. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, on the, the Woodrow Wilson, we talked about the Rowan County piece of that. There are Cabarrus County students that attend that school, even though it is physically located in Rowan County. Correct. Do, do you have any idea of percentage at 50-50 or? It's probably not 50, ballpark. probably not 50-50. It's, I'd I, I, I be afraid to guess off the top of my head, but I mean, it, uh, the majority of the students are Rowan, but there there are some Cabarrus. Right. Well, I know it is, it is right on the line, just like Jackson mm -hmm. Park is, so I wasn't sure. Right there. I mean, the the attendance zone for that school does go into Cabarrus. So, uh -huh. yeah. thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you all very much. Thank, thank you, guys. You. We we appreciate it. Okay, commissioners, if you will go um, two pages over. I'm sorry. If you will go to page eight, it looks like. Um, we have the request from Rowan Cabarrus Community College and likewise if you folks would like to come up and I appreciate you uh, missing a meeting and uh, being here on your your or not sorry being here on your break because um, I know you had some other staff members that had already made plans so right. um, thank you mm -hmm. Doing uh, Jonathan course. Chamberlain who's our uh, uh, chief of our facilities is with me uh, he has a corrected handout. Um, I don't know that it's any different than what you have here, but I think there was a version at one point through the email last week that was an error. So we're here to answer questions or um, uh, do a presentation, whichever is needed on the request that we have from our board of trustees for a $16 million investment in uh, the community college and its facilities at South Campus. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, the one we have in our, um, on our iPads is not quite the same as the one in front of us. Okay, and the $16 million request is um, for the bond is specifically for the 4,000 building, is that correct? Or 4,000 building, um, the road out uh, a different exit off, uh, rather than using uh, Trinity Church so we're looking for a back exit and also additional acreage the um, south campus is only 23 acres and that doesn't give us the capacity to plan for the long term and that uh, land is available and if we do the the road out the back I think there could be some possibilities for um, planning uh, that road maybe getting some DOT help or uh, other kinds of people who might own that land. So we're looking at uh, how we can expand uh, for the needs of the community going forward. Um, and now we have the ability uh, to do that. Um, we should, and when the land is available, we should do it. You can tell from the investment in that area that uh, that land will not be available for very long uh, as it will be, a, I think, an, another very vital uh, intersection in Cabarrus County. Okay, and I just wanted to make sure, sorry, I'm flipping pages. So what you gave us, this handout um, has to do with the building 4000, is that correct? Correct, um, it, it corrected w one item. Uh, we had budgeted the project at 12 million three. Uh, we were using the uh, state construction offices uh, estimating form and you'll notice there's uh, $380,000 identified as projected escalation cost. That should have been factored into the 12 million three. The form that was originally submitted added it on top of it. So, uh, with the 12 million three and the 3 million seven that we're projecting for the land, uh, that totals to the board's request for 16 million. 
Okay, and commissioners, I think if you keep going on your iPad, you're going to see um, a couple pages over. Um, if I can find it. Um, page 12 has the 3.7. Which is for the land, right? The land and the and the road and the roads included in that mm -hmm. also. Yes. Okay. Okay, commissioners. Um, any questions concerning um, these updated numbers from Rowan Cabarrus Community College? Can I just do one yes, little? You're welcome to say. It. Okay. This well, this isn't the only meeting I came back for. Um, I came back for one this morning, which was about the the future, you know, job job creation. And uh, I'm really excited about what I heard, which was advanced uh, manufacturing is going to have a big comeback in this area, um, in this special, in this region in particular. We're up for a grant, and so far we've made the semifinals. We might make the finals. It won't help us specifically in paying for this $12 million, $12 million three building, but it uh, reinforces our, uh, this, you know, our criteria for wanting to have an advanced technology center here in Cabarrus County. Many other community colleges around the region have them. Um, and this is the, the new ticket to the middle class. The, the digitization of manufacturing is really the key, and that is software. And so uh, this whole approach that uh, is not offered here uh, is something we could do in this Advanced Technology Center. So it's a really important, it's not just a building. It's a building with a function that we do not have. It's a, it's a way of training for jobs that we cannot train for at, at this point. And this is a rapidly changing uh, area. Um, and the, the need for people to work in these areas is, uh, is explicit. People have told you we don't, have peop we don't have people who have these job skills. And this particular kind of facility can make that happen. Uh, so, um, you know, one of the things that they talked about, they talked about Mexico as being a competitor and that Mexico will be the manufacturing powerhouse. They have more STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math graduates than the United States does, and they have more engineers than we do. So we think we need to be spending more time and energy on STEM, which you've seen already, and uh, some of the things like the research campus, uh, the advanced technologies area at uh, A.L. Brown and all. Um, but this is an area that there will be jobs for, and manufacturing will come back to the United States. Not the old jobs that were low paying, but these high paying jobs. And the advanced technology centers around the region will prepare workers for that. And so, you know, it's not just capacity of numbers of people doing the same thing. We mostly have a transfer program it's at, uh, in Cabarrus County where you go on for a four year degree. This is really those job skills that in, that uh, manufacturing will need. So I just wanted to sort of heighten your um, appreciation for uh, the approach here. It's not just the next building. It really is an advancement for the whole community. So thank you. Appreciate that. Dr. Spaulding, um, yes, how many floors, uh, stories will this facility be? I think John's going to answer that one. It's anticipated to be three floors. Three floors. <laughs> one of those would be a semi-basement level. The the site actually has some slope to it, so it would open out onto a, uh, a paved um, area that would allow for loading um, the various equipment in and out of the building conveniently. I noticed that the cost per square foot on it is a little bit higher than, than some of the other buildings that we built in Cabarrus County. Um, what, what is the basis for that? Yeah, um, as Dr. Spaulding mentioned, there have been a number of advanced technology buildings constructed at the uh, community college within the North Carolina system. Uh, those range uh, significantly uh, from the upper $200 uh, and beyond per square foot um, down into the range of 160. I think we're using a relatively modest number here, um, and uh, it's, it's based on uh, experience with other advanced technology buildings. And when I was looking through our um, capital improvement plan that was in our budget from this year, um, the number that we had for that facility was $10 million. So this number is about 23% higher than that number, and, and we're still within the same fiscal year. Can you explain, just give me some details as to, as to the difference between those two? Really comes down to the conceptualization of the building itself. Um, in its original forms, uh, we had batted around ideas of it really being uh, 
perhaps automotive, some computer networking. Uh, as the concept for the building advances and becomes a little bit firmer, as Dr. Spaulding mentioned, with a, a very heavy computer element to it, uh, that's impacted the estimates for it. And, and as we move through these conceptual estimates, um, we, we will update them as, as we have additional information available on them. I'm not sure the, the name of the center, but um, the center that's off of 29 and uh, Poplar Tent. Cabarrus Business and Technology Center. Business and Technology right. Center. Um, is that center going to go away, or is the Advanced um, Technology Center going to um, supplement it, or how do you see those two facilities interplay? We will a add additional programs in the Advanced Technology Center. Um, all of our programs at the, the, uh, the CBTC, frankly, are changing. We've changed those program mixes uh, very often. We started the uh, biotechnology program there, then we moved it to the research campus. Um, so it's really an incubator for a lot of our programs. We have moved our electricity program from North Campus in January and our electronics program from uh, South Campus because neither of them had enough space there. Mm -hmm. Combine those, combine uh, so the faculty can work together and use and share equipment. So uh, those are programs that can expand. Um, so they're in limited head, they're in limited spaces right now. Um, so my guess is some of it will go to the new building, some of it will stay where it is, um, and we'll be able to offer things like advanced materials, nanotechnology, um, and several of the other kinds of programming uh, languages that are necessary for this new advanced technology area. So it would be a combination of moving things from one place to another that can work together and share facilities and um, some new programs. How big is, did you call it the CBTC? Yeah. How big is the CBTC? I'm not sure. Yeah, we'd have to get back to you. I've okay. got it on my computer. If you gave me five minutes to look it up, I yeah. could. But, uh, I understand. That's get a back we to leased that, question. We, we leased that, that building. Um, the college was able to use that building um, after the pillow tech I issue where uh, it had been used as a high school and then as the Cabarrus administration building and then was rehabbed uh, for use after the pillow tax when we had so many people who were unemployed and we used it at that point and we rent it for a dollar a year so it belongs to the county really um, and uh, our air conditioning and refrigeration is there we want to start a solar program there's no room for that um, so we're in a pretty constrained uh, area for the kinds of labs that we have and, and I think you had mentioned that some of the programming that happens at the um, research campus may also be tied into the Advanced Technology Center. Is that right? Well, we won't move our biotechnology. Sure. And we yeah. won't move our nursing. Mm -hmm. um, the research campus is paid for uh, strictly by <coughs> state funds. There's no county money. There's never been any county money in that building. Okay. Um, so the benefit is that the state... Uh, is supporting that for the for 20 years and then the college receives the building so um, I don't know if that exactly answers your question we but we would move programs as we need to I don't expect that we will move the either of those programs um, they have the space they need um, they are state-of-the-art uh, that's probably the the most advanced community college building you know in the state now do you have extra space there right now we have an unbuilt uh, section that's that was reserved for a uh, an, an, a special kind of a lab uh, mm -hmm. that we have not we didn't have enough money we had to value engineer it out yeah yeah okay and um, just so you know I have you this this um, building in my in the cash plan as well so I, I'm going to talk about that more later on and things like okay. that but but it is something that I have in there and also the cosmetology center thank you I appreciate that how many students uh, would this program serve well uh, we think about it in terms of program graduates we think about it in terms of students per hour <laughs> okay so um, it's possible that there would be 325 students per hour in this building uh, that's what we have currently even with the space that's the one we have one corner classroom that has not been used 
um, in the research campus. And we have about 325,000, 325 students in and out of there in an hour. Uh, it depends on if they're in clinicals or where they are, but when we had our fire drill, we had to count them, and that's how we know uh, that there were 325 students in there an hour. Um, so this is about the same square footage, three, three stories. Yeah, it's about the same. Uh, the, the lab buildings would be, they, there would be a lower ratio of students per square foot in a lab kind of situation. Um, but you would have, I mean, for example, in, in our air conditioning and heating refrigeration, it's 325 people enrolled in the program day and night. So it, it doesn't <coughs> exactly translate that way. Right. I understand. Um, and we would, we would look at Forsyth, who's had a lot of its experience with advanced technology centers already to look at what, what their program mix was and what their enrollment was okay. and to give you some better ideas. Right. That leads me into the next question. Sure. As you mentioned, some of the other regions in the state have programs yes. like this at the community college. What are some of those you mentioned, Forsyth? Forsyth is one. Gaston's building one. Mitchell has one. Uh, there's a small one that uh, Stanley's starting. It's much substantially st smaller than we have. Um, I think if you look, and of course, Central Piedmont has everything. Um, they might have more than one of those, but um, I, I think we may be the only community college that doesn't have one. Okay. And um, that doesn't make me feel good that we're behind. Right. Um, but in any case, most of them have them. And, and throughout the state, they're uh, Forsyth, Guilford. Um, I mean, Guilford has huge buildings, and they have, they have a, just a dental building. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends on your program mix, depends on how your county funds you. Um, there's huge diversity in North Carolina in the uh, amount of square footage, the program mix. All of community colleges flex to fit their communities. So we serve that. Right. Um, and so, you know, most of them have nursing. Not all of them have nursing. So it just depends on that. But advanced technology is where we're all going. If we're going to keep this technical um historical advantage that we've had and morph it into these jobs for the 21st century which are high paying high technology if we're going to go there which we, we need to go there all the community colleges will have this in one way or another they might not have a big one they might not have multiple programs but they will have an advanced technology center of some sort um, to and i think the governor who was also at this meeting uh, this morning spoke highly about that particular role and the colleges and universities and the workforce development that needs to come to North Carolina to reinvigorate the economy. And that's hand in glove with quality of life and health care and all the other things that employers are looking for. So, um, you know, I came away from the meeting thinking, okay, you know, this was really wonderful for people to talk about community colleges and in, you know, great ways, but it's, you know, they, they tell you how much they love you and then they cut your budget. So, um, you know we'd like to have some money to be able to do some of the things that people really want us to do so the county funds the buildings and the state funds the operations of those buildings um, and trying to make all that stuff come out so that we can be ahead of the game is really what we want to do if right. we can so if we do move forward with this project how would that impact your operating budget uh, you know how do you work that out with the state to well, ensure that it's not yeah. just an empty building we get paid well partly we would move a couple of very vital programs that need expansion into uh, uh, into that facility just like we did the um, uh, biotechnology building we we started the program and then grew the students the student population in a small kind of setting and then we moved it to a, be a better place so um, we would do that. We would, we would have to hire new faculty. Um, part of our private fundraising is for the Advanced Technology Center. We've slated $2 million to go into the development of this, which would include program development. The state does not fund program development. Uh, fortunately, we share a lot of that with each other, so it's, it's not as big of a problem as you think. We'd also raise money for equipment. So that part we're gonna try and do a, the combination of state funds, grants, and private funding. Uh, over the last four years, we've raised over a million dollars just from Duke alone for uh, substantial um, equipment for welding, for um, CNC operations, and I think there's two of those. So we, we are very good at writing grants and getting money for, uh, for 
the program part of that. Um, and we also get a million dollars a year just about for, for um, equipment in good years. I think we've had a couple of good years. Um, and that's where we would get the money for um, the new program development to, to, to do that. If you really have a good program and you've got a great relationship with your business and industry, many times they give you uh, parts of the equipment that you use so that you can train for those jobs. So it's a combination of all those factors and we are resourceful enough to look for every possible way to, to make it work. Part of, part of your funding from the state is based on your enrollment numbers as well. That's right. And so you would anticipate that probably these additional new programs are going to attract some students that may have to be going elsewhere to get that training. So that would rise as oh, well. Yeah. We would expect to have an increase in enrollment um, in these programs because these are programs we do not offer now. A lot right. of them would be, right. So this would be new new opportunities, new job opportunities. Right, just, just a, two conversations that I've heard over the last two days. One today was uh, from, from a, an economic development professional who was talking about with the rising cost of fuel and shipping expenses that, that a lot of our offshore manufacturing was coming back home uh, and, and they would need that kind of training and those kind of skills. Um, I had a, a mother to comment to me yesterday that her son who is enrolled in college is coming home this summer and will be taking a course at Rowan Cabarrus Community College, an engineering course that will transfer back That's right. to the school um, uh, completely and she was very complimentary about the, um, the, the cost savings that they would realize as well as the ability for him to live at home and uh, so so the the way those things work together I think is is really it's improved I've just recently it's improved hasn't it oh yes it's yes. Uh, this was um, the president of Siemens USA who's been in conversations nationally um, and has looked at the Charlotte area in particular as being uh, a hub for returning manufacturing made in USA back right. to USA and but they won't be these the old jobs we remember there'll be these new uh, high-tech jobs that'll be software oriented and right. if we if there was a business that walked into tomorrow and said can you set this up we would have to scramble with a advanced technology center we would be ready for that and we want to you know it's a chicken and egg does the workforce d get ready before the the businesses come so we, we have to play that also um, but generally you get your workforce ready because these are uh, these are jobs that are available and will be available and that are very uh, in high demand well and having the workforce ready a lot of times is the tipping point as to whether someone's decision to, to locate here right. as well so right the the, um, the biggest problem that uh, the president of Siemens said is that manufacturing has a bad brand um, that uh, out of out of a list of things that parents want their kids to do for a living manufacturing is at the bottom and it's partly because they've seen the layoffs uh, right. from the past and if you have the skills of programming and software development these are transferable uh, it's not just one job doing one piece of the work over and over um, so I don't think it would be I don't think it's going to be like it's ever been I mean uh, the future is not going to be like the past right mm -hmm. and 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 your bond request is a little bit different from from the school systems in that yours will be on a separate vote that's what i understand uh that's that's what what i understand as well mm -hmm. um, so. we have experience passing a bond issue we passed one in 2010 for rowan county uh, we're now building with that money now um and uh so it's it's a it's a long process all of the building processes are a long process. Exactly. But th thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who, who pays for maintenance on your buildings? Does county do that or state? County do that? pays. No, on the research campus building, the state pays. Okay. The county, this county, all the county money, Cabarrus County money only stays in Cabarrus County for <coughs> CBTC, for South Campus, for Cloverleaf, and, and then. Uh, for our BLET, our basic law enforcement. All the places that we lease, um, the county pays pays the, the for all the facilities 
in no. Converse County. Rowan, they pay for North Campus, all of, all of the maintenance, all of the upkeep, and new facilities. Now, you talk about grant money. Is most of that from federal, is that state, or both? Well, Duke is private. Um, most of it's private? Most of it's private. Oh, okay. um, we did get a, a federal grant uh, for $2 million to add to the bond issue. Uh, we had a small bond issue in Rowan, and uh, so to make that money go further, um, we raised $2 million through a grant process, competitive grant process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How much was your bond issue in Rowan County? $12 million. Okay. And so what projects are you working on with that? Well, it started yeah. off to be an ADA project. Um, American with Disabilities Act, because we had one elevator and three two-story buildings. Uh, so it was a ramp and it was a long way and we had stair problems and all kinds of accessibility. So we started off with that and then um, it ended up, we really did need additional space at South Campus. So we tried to get another additional new building. Um, and uh, we were not successful at getting the $18 million that we asked for. Um, the county cut it to 12 in a conversation with no data no square footage, no nothing, just cut it. And um, so that's why we went out and got the other grant money is because that was not enough money to give us any additional square footage. We just ended up doing repair work uh, for a, you know, a 1960s vintage campus that hadn't had very much investment over time. And so uh, we also built a new uh, fire training center, which um, was a portion of that money um, I think it was 2.3 million, right. and uh, that's complete. The part, and we built the infrastructure for that. So we we built the um, the design, the places for the props to be, and all that kind of stuff. And then we raised um, we got props by asking the train company they asked for box for a box car and. Um, they said, well, they don't give box cars. And I said, well, you know, can we be your first? And so they gave us a box car. And then they called back a little bit later and they said, do you want an oil tanker? We said, yeah, we'd love to have an oil tanker. So I called up this guy and, and he says, well, we give two, two oil tankers a year. It was January of last year. They said, you're the first one to call, you get one. So we got two cars that fast. Then we had to figure out how to get them on campus. It was gonna cost us about $50,000 to get them on campus. So through a friend of a friend, um, we had most of that expense donated. Um, most of it, we paid about $18,000 for a whole project. So we do what we can to get the money and get the projects. So now we're sitting there with other places where we can do props and that's more reasonable. But we have a new burn building and we have a new uh, we have some. We, we didn't have enough money to do a, a mock fire station. You know, ex building is expensive, and uh, so we we have to be resourceful about where we get our money and and how we get it. We're not afraid to ask. Certainly, I mean, we feel like that this ought to be. Uh, you know, people should support the community college. It really is uh, such a valuable resource. So we'll ask, just like we're asking you. Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, I, just a clarification, because I, I believe you said this before, but I, wanna, I don't want to misspeak. Um, you collect tuition from all your students, and you send that money to Raleigh. 24 and hours. Within 24 hours. <laughs> Maybe a um, The General Assembly, I would presume then, determines the level of funding that you get. That's right. Which is not based on the tuition that you collect. Nope. And any monies, if you collect more, tui more tuition dollars than your funding, those tuition dollars are put back into the general fund and can be used for any other purpose that the General Assembly chooses. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. And you are a giving county. Uh, you're a giving community college. We used to be. I, we have now a lot of grant, a lot of waivers. Um, our police and fire have waivers. We don't, we have a lot of people who take training in there and generates a lot of FTE, there's no tuition going to the state. Um, our early college or our, uh, any of our high school programs, they pay no tuition, those are waivers, there's no tuition going to the state. That's now about 1% of our FTE is the high school program. No, there's no tuition going to the state there. So um, I would say 
there's almost no chance of a community college being a donor on the tuition side. Okay, so because I, the tuition pays about 15% of the cost of going to college. Okay, so I just want to make sure because I, I was under the impression that you collected more than you were funded. And I wanted to make, I did not want to say that if that was not true. So you no. do get additional funding from the general legislature then over and above the tuition that you are, that yes. you collect. Tuition okay. does not pay the cost of going to college in this state or any other state. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because that was one that I, I, mm -hmm. I had misunderstood before. So thank you for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, I think, a minute ago, and I also want to clarify that some of the programs that you, or, or let me let me just restate and make sure that's right. You have programs in the 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 building that would move into the 4,000 building. Our motorsports management would move for sure. Okay. Uh, probably some uh, computerized programs would move. Okay. Um, that would free up space wherever that is mm -hmm. for a different purpose. Um, in your thought process, would that mean, would one of those purposes be that the early college goes into a building and is no longer in the mobile units that are sitting out? I think that's something we can plan for. I didn't know what your plans were. I'm not asking you to do that. Yeah, we're not, if we, we don't have a plan to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it is just trying to figure out what the, what's, what the uses are gonna be, but generally, you know, we've already vacated most of the first floor of building 2000 for early college. Okay, and I, I wasn't 100 percent certain. I and it was out there um, last week. Yeah. I was on your cam on your South mm -hmm. Campus, and um, typically my driving pattern is to be around the 1000 building. Okay, because that's your, you know, kind of like your, your center building that you know. And um, I ed ended up exiting down Trinity Church Road and uh, noticed the mobile units on the oh, yeah. end, and I just hadn't. I usually don't drive that way, so that's why I was curious if no. you were planning on replacing those. I don't know if those are paid for mobile units or if they're leased by Cabarrus County Schools or their arrangements. So I was just curious if okay. what your plans were for that, that program. Right. I hear very good comments from parents and students about being in the early college program. I do too. I think it's true. I mean, it's wonderful that they graduate, most of them, I mean, 85% of them graduate with both a degree in from college and a high school diploma so just to clarify what that means is that they go five years four four years well, this i think cabarrus has them slightly on a five year that's why rowan has a four-year program and okay. they graduate for, with both and four with both degrees so they're getting college credits and high school credits at yeah. the same time right which um, if you're a parent paying for college having done that recently yeah um, and the that's schools, really nice the schools pay the books and the college waives the tuition it's and it's for, I, and I could be wrong, so you can correct that too. Is it for students who have, they're the first ones going to college in their family? I think 85% of them need to be qualified that way, uh, but there's a lottery to get in. At both Rowan's both. campus and the Cabarrus mm -hmm. campus? Wow, that's great then. Mm -hmm. It's nice to know that that's being utilized and that there's a demand for it. There's a demand for it. Yeah, okay. Hey, any other questions for Rowan Cabarrus Community College? Um, I will say the other thing I have sort of asked, but honestly was too busy the last couple of weeks to truly follow up. Um, I'd like to get, not from you, the plans that show the um, what's going to happen on on the um, having to turn right and then you turn to go back left and everything. There are ways that that can be done very well that it really does work because um, I've seen that, but I'm not real certain what those plans look like. And um, Jonathan, I don't know if. Um, I feel certain you could. I, and I apologize, I should have asked you earlier for that, but um, from that was one of your concerns is, is exiting that way. Of course, they can go out to the left on Trinity Church Road, loop around either way. They can go left or right, um, back up that way, or they can go this way towards northwest and, mm -hmm. and get on the bypass. So there, there are a couple exits, but well, I'm the, curious about how that reworking is going to look. This idea actually came out of our conversations okay. with DOT, and they said, don't you, know, don't you need a back exit? because of security issues. And I think, Mike, were you in that same meeting? Yeah. And so we looked at it and, you know, that helped us start thinking ahead. Um, and we should be thinking ahead about what the long-term needs are for that campus. So that's one of them. And 
uh, and I think well we're still you know, we're still trying to figure out if that's I'm sure that intersection will work right I'm sure it will okay thank you very much thank you. Dr. Spalding I have one other question between um, is, is your list that you gave us in the um, January retreat is that a prioritized list mm -hmm. okay I just yeah. wanted to make sure that that was your it, yep. it wasn't just general that these are the projects those we are had a your bunch priorities. of other stuff that you'll see yep. that fall below one through three so they're not on here okay. so we've got more uh, request but you didn't see them here there's but they still exist thank you I just wanted to make sure that was the case yeah appreciate that thank you thank you very much okay commissioners on page 20 you will see the request from Cabarrus County yeah. Board of Education um, I'm glad that Blake Tiger has come up if I don't know who you well, I was looking see for Mr. Kelly. Whitkey and <laughs> if you will make sure that yeah. you um, we just have a few Rob? seats and yeah. if you will do us the pleasure of introducing any board members that are here we do not want to overlook anyone that's or staff members if you can do that um, Be happy. Kelly might have to help Be with that but um, <laughs> um, if you can introduce anyone that's here I will today, before I do that I, um, the trailers that you mentioned at uh, Rowan Cabarrus at the early college that they were owned out by right by Cabarrus County Schools and we uh, donated them and then shared in the cost they helped pay the cost to set up and underpin and, and and whatnot but we did share in the cost of that and that's where they came from um, okay well thank you for for having us um, I'm uh, Blake Kiger chairman of Board of Education I've got other board members here uh, as well Carolyn Carpenter is is here Lynn Shu is here David Harrison is here uh, Jeff Phillips is here and Rob Walter is here and Barry Shoemaker is our uh, board vice chair uh, Lynn Whitkey you know is our uh, executive director of uh, facilities and, and maintenance and Kelly Clark <coughs> our, our finance director and uh, we appreciate the invitation and in, in, in coming over to uh, uh, talk to you about a, a potential uh, bond you've got in front of you the uh the the list that we sent that that matches uh what we gave you on our resolution other than it <coughs> this one has specific dollar amounts listed with the projects the original amount of 60 million just had the projects listed the projects haven't haven't the name of the projects haven't changed but this one has uh, line items on it or a schedule of values the one, one thing we did do um i believe at the direction of the the uh, uh some input we got from from you all on your board was to break out things that you would that would be more appropriate for borrowing or a bond versus things that would be better suited for cash and so we've we've done that and things like architecture and engineering and things like that that you wouldn't borrow money for we've we've pulled out so um, the uh, um, I don't know if there's any really anything else to say opening wise I know you you all will have questions and we're, we're happy to uh, to answer them okay um, is there any comments or questions from the commissioners well I am curious why you have um, 22 million dollars listed for Mount Pleasant on the middle school for the bond when we've allocated 13 and a half million dollars to you already we're asking for the to make the, the project whole you know how you how you guys arrive there I, I don't know how you're going to get there but we're asking to to make that project whole and we think it's going to be 22 million dollars to make it whole wouldn't that be eight million dollars then to make it whole we've not been given 13 five you may have it you may have set it aside but it has not been given to us and and I'd, I'd I'd love to have that eight and a half million dollars to to make it whole and and you're right that that's I mean the 13 five and the difference that's the number that 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 we're after but um, it's, well, it's not ours yet sure I'm sorry and I guess that's still it's been my question since October which is Kannapolis City Schools has come back to us they I had detailed discussions with him uh, Will Crabtree this week um, <coughs> they spoke with their architect and said they can build an 1100 seat middle school for uh, the number he gave me was 22.9 million and you all are still asking for 22 million to build a school for 700 students and I and I've never been able to reconcile those two numbers um, I, 
I'd like to give you one more chance to reconcile that for me. Okay. I, I'd like to think I have maybe one more than one more chance because the project is that important to us. We think that uh, based on the feedback that we've gotten from the town and a unanimous uh, uh, um, resolution passed by the town council to put the middle school on the current site, that we know there's expenses there that you otherwise wouldn't have. I can't comment on their 23 million. I don't know what the site looks like. I don't know if they've already paid for it. I don't know if they had to do any environmental work. I, I, I can't comment on that. I can tell you that what we've done is try to make the best uh, guess that we can on the climate that we're going to have to build the school in while taking into account, you know, engineering and asbestos abatement and demolition. Um, the pull, we, you have been um, you have given us two million dollars to start the process which we have done um, to to meet with the architect and, and and get where we think we need to go with design I'll be I'll be thrilled if the numbers is lower than that I, I'll be somewhat surprised I, I think typically you know you want to go into a project with contingency we, we've had that conversation before I don't think uh, we're out of bounds in, in fact mr. Whitkey um, he, he likes to chide me a little bit that he doesn't think the number's high enough. So, you know, and, and, and that's, not, that's not anything unusual for uh, this type of project. You've got differences of opinion. We're trying to project what we think is going to happen. We're trying to project what's underground. We don't know what we're going to hit when we start digging around a building that was built in 1940, 30-something, 40-something, 50-something. So that, that's... That's part of the thing. I can tell you we, we've estimated the, the cost at about $141 a square foot. And that's, that's the number we were used. We're basing that number on current climate and current, right. uh, current construction costs that, uh, that are known or, or out there. But there, there are, are unknowns. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's what we think it's going to That's what we think it's going to take. The, the issue that I still have with that is if you take 700 and divide it by 1100, you get 63%. And if you multiply 63% times 22 million, uh, you get 14 million. So I'd be hard pressed to believe that we have $8 million in demolition costs out at that site. Um, and that's why I continue to come back to that number. You look at some of the other schools that you built, I know they're much older. Uh, we've talked about those before, but this is a contemporaneous um, budget for us to compare it with. And um, I, I would just, I, I, I have a very hard time reconciling those two numbers as we sit in the meeting and, and hear those two numbers 15 minutes apart from each other. So um, we've talked about that before. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but that's my issue. Can I just add, Mr. Osreich, I've invited you twice to meet with me. We've not met yet. If you would care to join me in a meeting and talk about prices, I'll be happy to do that. The costs vary significantly from site to site, from school type to school type numbers of children in a classroom uh, dividing that number into a total cost doesn't really work and I can explain why but um, the idea of uh, trying to identify now what it will take to uh, deal with underground und undetermined underground conditions is pretty difficult we have a site that's been really occupied for the last 60 or 70 years and a number of things have happened there so we have to plan for some of those things to kind of pop up and hit us in the nose. And so there are costs as part of this plan to address those things. The cost of a classroom is probably the least expensive part of any building that we do. It's the rest of the facilities that cost money. The core facility is larger, and it's based on that because we don't know what the future will bring. And you can't easily add core facilities later. So it's it's a substantial need that is that has to be built into the school to address what could happen in the future and most likely will over time but like I said the classroom costs are pretty nominally quite small compared to the other costs for the building but like I said I, I'd be happy to meet with you in my office go over those costs in detail and see where it all comes out and, and let me just add to that that our, our, our board will need to determine how we want to approach that I mean what we're what we think off the top of our head or what we've been doing is that we want to replace a 700 student school on that site 
when we get with the architect and start working on design, we've got to have a conversation, well, how much of the core do we want to do? At one time, this board, the previous county manager, wanted us to do a 1,200 students school out there. That doesn't make any sense to us in today's world. Maybe it did in, I think that was 2007, before the crash. I, uh, I, I read and uh, I got an email today. I think everybody got it. I was not aware that an apartment complex had been approved in Mount Pleasant. I, what does that look like and where is it going? I'm not sure. ORED should have taken that into account. We think, we think that document has it. But as we move through the design phase, we, we've got to make some decisions like that. And that, that's going to impact where, where we end up. So the overall cost <coughs> estimate, I, I, I feel pretty confident that we're not too far off. You know, I, 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 I'm going to agree with you. I don't think we have $8 million worth of demolition out there. Um, but we certainly have asbestos abatement that you have to do. We certainly don't know what we're going to hit when we, when we hit the ground. We've got a, a, a road that we've been told maybe we want to close it, maybe we don't. We've got design elements that it may fit a certain place on the school, but that's not what the town wants because the town wants the football stadium to stay where it is, and we're sensitive to that. It's kind of a historic piece, so if we have to design around that a little bit, uh, that may be something we have to do. But all of that under a normal process is things that we put together and then provide a little more clarity and detail once we know, you know exactly how, how we're going to get where we're trying to go. But to, to start off, I, I don't, I'm, I'm just hesitant to say, well, they're going to build X for that number, those, that number of students when we've got a totally different scenario with what we're trying to do. And, and I will say, Lynn, I don't, I don't think that I can come up with the precise number. But what I will say is that from the beginning, this Mount Pleasant Middle School has been very overestimated. And so I have had to use rough numbers in order to come up with a way to figure out, at, it was listed at $31 million for 900 students, and we're talking about building the core for substantially higher than 700 students, and you talked about the classroom. So we are still building a lot of the building for 900 students, but it's down to 22 million now. So we, we've had to use a lot of those back of the napkin figures in order to figure out where we can end up. So I, that's all that I'm, I, I don't think it's a perfect number, it's just a round number for us to, to evaluate. It's just an evaluation tool is all that I've used it as. Okay. Um, and, 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 oh. Go ahead. You well, I just wanted to comment briefly on the 31 million, yep. and that's, you know, I, I, I guess this is a function of, you know, government at its finest. You know, when we've had something before, we did a study, we got feedback from, you know, as I, I keep pointing at Mike, it wasn't Mike, but uh, a, a previous county manager, oh, we need to do this size. So we do a study based on that size. A couple years go by, the project's been shelved, but we've got reporting that we have to do to DPI every five years. Well, that project's on it, and Lynn takes that number and doesn't necessarily think, well, the climate has changed and the market has changed, and we wouldn't probably do 1,200 students or or 800 or 900, I'm not sure what was on there. Yeah. But he took a factor to add to the 28 million that was on the original study to go on a report that goes to DPI. That, that really doesn't have anything to do with us sitting here with you guys. We're not building that, we're not asking you to fund that. It, it's, just, it's just a function of somehow the, the process and the steps that you have to go through to get, the, to get where you know, an agency in Raleigh is asking you for a document. So that, that, that's where the number comes from. But, but you're right, if you look at the paper trail it, it, you know, that's part of it, and, and you just kind of have to understand where it came from. I wanted to also ask about the capacity at Royal Oaks. Okay. Um, your ORED study shows that all the way through 2022 to 2023, you will have 411 students out there. I know in the past we've talked some about moving some of, of Weddington, I'm sorry, Weinkoff, um, over to that, um, and, and we've gone through that. Mm -hmm. Probably with those two, I think you ended up at um, uh, 450 or, or I think something to that effect in 2022, 2023 of total capacity there. Um, my concern on the 700 is we've got capacity right now of 14,564. We just approved the funding for the new elementary school for 1,000 students, which brings you to 15,564. Um, in, I, I just looked at 
2019, 2020, because I have a five-year plan, and then a lot of cash becomes available at the end of that five-year plan at which we could start really building new schools if we need to. So I looked at 2020 for, for purposes of where your capacity is. And um, for Royal Oaks by itself, in 2020, you have 375 students, which means you have an additional capacity in, in 2020 of um, 425 students there from what you have now. So we add that together. So in 2020, you will have 15,889 spaces for elementary school students. And it looks like you have 13,911 students based on your ORED study. So we have, we have over capacity of about 2,000. And I know some of that will be down in, in um, um, Bethel. Bethel. Uh, and, and so that's 500 students. But, but even still, when you start taking out things like um, Bethel and A.T. Allen and things like that, and just that does give you um, a lot of capacity where you need it. And I'm just curious if we could build Royal Oaks to a, a, a number that matches what their capacity needs are, particularly that's not a growth area, that would save us a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of money. I mean, if you're talking about right. a 20-year bond, uh, I think the factor is about uh, 0.56 in terms of interest. Whatever you pay in principal, you're paying back 0.56 in interest over that 20 years. Um, could we build that school to a smaller level and and then in 2020, when you've got a bunch of cash available, come back and look at our needs. Because one thing I don't want to have happen is like what we have at Bethel, where we've got 500. Right. Uh, the longer that you can wait to build schools, the better that you can adjust to uh, what our population growth really is. And if we're not having to borrow the money, then I think we went on both uh, sides. So what do you think about that? I, I think that's uh, entirely possible. And I don't disagree with what you said. It, it, you know, the numbers are what they are. I mean, we've got them in front of us. The, the capacity, according to the, the study, is not going to change at, at Royal Oaks. I think what we're trying to accomplish there is to take into account maybe a, a larger view of the uh, area as a whole where we have multiple small schools. And what we're trying to determine is, does it make financial sense to rebuild and re redo a a 400 student school where you have to staff a principal and I mean there's administrative costs there that don't change you know because it's smaller or do you go a little bit larger and then figure out how do we make this work with other schools that are in the area particularly I think what we what we kind of swerved into was surge space and so if you if you build Royal Oaks a, a bigger than what you by the numbers what by the numbers say you need but you know that in you're you're, you're approaching I, I, I hesitate to use the word dire need but that's what jumps in my head but if you're approaching dire need at, at schools like Beverly Hills and um, McAllister. Uh, McAllister and uh, Coltrane Webb that while you're doing you know if you have to tear down half a building you have somewhere to put the students and then you do another one and you have somewhere to build the students so that at the end of the period where and let's just take for example if your cash is available where we're doing those other projects and not having to borrow money which that's fine too we have something to adjust and do and at the end of all of that um, if there's been growth and and we, we, we've added the, the kids to the seats hopefully by that time that that Royal Oaks is not only half full now that number does have land purchase in it so if we decide that the thing to do is to go right back on the site you know that that's I think it's a million and a half they have in there for that well if you can do it on the site that then, then you don't have to do that the question then becomes does it make financial sense to build a school on a street where the kids that live right across from the school don't go there you know we didn't draw the boundary that's what the boundary is a long time ago but the kids from across the street go to Kannapolis City Schools you know, I, I think in a in a perfect world, if you had to, that to decide today, the answer to that is probably not. You wouldn't do that, but it's there, and so we're trying to juggle: do you replace and repurpose, add a little to use a search space, um, and then it, by the end of that, I think you're kind of back to the same place where you were. Where I don't think you've done the wrong thing financially. I think you've just gone about it a different way. My other question on this is, um, for the new elementary school. Um, which we don't have cash for. We, I mean, land for. I'm sorry. We were gonna. That the land was in the purchase price. Um, you had requested of us 19.5 million. That was your request. 
we had a disagreement about what we could build that school for, so we funded 17.5, but your request was 19.5, and that was for a thousand person school. And this is a total of 17.5 million for a 700 person school. And again, that's a 30% reduction in terms of capacity size, but there's not, um, but $2 million difference and, and 2 million out of 19 and, and a half million is not certainly a 30% reduction. So I don't see consistency between those two um, estimates and I was wondering if you could address that. Okay. The, I, I, I hate to pass this off. The Royal Oaks estimate's not, not my number, so I'm, I'm going to let Mr. Whitkey answer that one. Um, I probably have, maybe have, I'll probably have some comment after he's done, but Mr. Whitkey, if you'd like to address that. Yeah, I think what we're looking at is <clears throat> certainly an increase in cost. Again, this is based on <laughs> building two years out from, from where we're at right now. So, you know, to, to look at the costs that they are today, you can't do that. You've got, you know that the numbers are going up. Every, every firm that I've talked to has said their projects are elevated from where they were a year ago, uh, and numbers are starting to climb. So uh, we, we've chosen a higher figure. Uh, per square foot than, than the previous project for that reason. Uh, we did have uh, some land in here in case, depending on where our board chooses to place the school, it allows us to have that opportunity to buy property. And uh, there's a contingency in here, like, as in all cases for, for projects of this size. So I think the, there is some cost difference, but it's mainly focused on an escalation cost in, in the uh, but in your 19.5 million dollar number you had land in that and you had a contingency in that and mm -hmm. so there's only 10 percent difference between what you've asked for for this royal oaks replacement and what you asked for for the new elementary school and there's a 30 percent difference in capacity i can say that you know we're we're we have numbers right now, but I, as far as bidding it, we plan to bid the, uh, the new facility in June, so we're going to have some hard costs at that time, and we're all going to be a lot smarter at that point. But uh, at this juncture, you know, that, that was a project we, we looked at, at at a point in time where we needed to get uh, uh, the budget together. Uh, this project, um, you know, we're building, we're building the core smaller, and uh, uh, because we, we don't think that there'll be an expansive need as we just talked about. And so this core is a bit smaller than, than the one at, uh, at the new elementary school. And that has an account, there, there's a cost attendant to that as well. So. Yeah, I, I guess part of that too, it depends, um, you know, with the new elementary school, we did take actual numbers from a neighboring um, district and used an escalator that they had found on a more recent project um, this particular project it, it, it has a little bit of the Mount Pleasant to it where if you go in you're not a hundred percent sure how you're going to be able to handle what you're doing there's a building out there we're going to leave because we just replaced the roof and that building's not going going anywhere well now we're going around and trying to redesign around a, a structure that's already there we know there's some extra cost to that um, I, again, I, I, I've said this before. I, I hope it's not. I hope it's not this number. I, I really do. We think, for the purposes of the bond, it, it makes more sense to ask what you think and maybe err a little bit on the high side than err on the low side. You know, if we if you if we're in a position where you're paying cash, well, we're you know we're not doing that. Anymore. We're trying to zero in on the actual number. You know, as Mr. Wiki said, we're trying to project you know two or three years down the road. And, and not to be <laughs> argumentative with you all, Blake. Um, if if we have the 1.5 million in here for land and we don't buy the and we just do it out at, at Royal Oaks and that 1.5 million you'd, you'd assume would be more than adequate to cover for the d demolition out there wouldn't you I mean under normal circumstances it, it, it yep. should yes yeah. yes yeah. yeah. so so um, I, I do have a question about that um, the last question that I have is you and I had talked on the telephone about three schools that Mecklenburg County <coughs> had built in 2012 um, I'm sorry they completed them last year they were built to 800 student capacities one was Torrance Creek Elementary and including all site work there they spent 11.7 million on that Bain Elementary including all site work there was 11.5 million and Pineville Elementary and including all site work spent 11.5 million and that was for a school that was a hundred more than the capacity that we're talking about 
Um, so your equivalent for a school that's 100 less, if we take 1.5 out of the 14.7, you get to 13.2. Um, so that would be the equivalent apples to apples number f comparing these three to your estimate. And um, your school has 100 students less, but is $2 million more. What's that? We're, we've got listed as an 800 core. So the core is the same. I'm, uh, on my and, and seat capacity, it was seven. Okay. I, I, didn't, core, I don't have that sheet. Yeah, the core, yeah. Is, core is eight. And you know, I had all I had numbers for those three schools with me the last time we were here. I don't have them today. Um, you know, I, I, I th th there's, but those were the three schools that we used to come up with the 19.5. Sure. So th um, I'm very familiar with those, those three schools. Um, and, and quite frankly, I want to publicly thank uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg, their their department. They were very very helpful in, in providing us information. And, and Barry and I recently saw their chairman and made sure to thank her because they, they, they were terrific they but well, well. The, the you know as we go again if the if this is on the bond and the bond doesn't pass till November and we don't have this money till 2016 their project was bid in 12 ours is going to be bid in 16 you know whether that's worth two million dollars or not I, I'm not sure but that again we're, we're trying to look you know we're, we're just trying to look down the road and come up with what we think it's going to take I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Is is this list in priority order? It is not. Okay. We're, we're here. We, our our school system needs are are great, and these these are part of our needs. Okay. So what would you say your priority project is? Well, I I would tell you that for all of the students and staff and teachers and administrators at Cabarrus County Schools. All of these projects are important, and right. all of them rate as, as number one and 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 one A. Um, we've been pretty clear that uh, Mount Pleasant Middle <laughs> School was was the our top <coughs> priority. We we did we, we we did not list these in, in order, frankly, because they're they're projects that that we need that we would like to ask for that we'd <coughs> like to have on the bond if there is a bond to to get them done. But if you're asking for which one's the the top. At the you know, Mount Pleasant Middle replacements, the one that our board has discussed as being our top priority, and and quite frankly, you know, we've said Royal Oaks is probably one A, right? You know, right with it. Right. Okay, uh, I don't disagree that Royal Oaks is um, one of the most important. I guess that's why I am confused why the Mount Pleasant Middle School is back on the request. Um, you know, we sat in this meeting, and I know we'll have more discussion later, so I'll, I'll reserve some for that. But you know, we were in this meeting over a month and. A, a month ago and you know we voted 4-1 this commission board in this room voted 4-1 to move forward with this project paying cash and at that time it was clearly stated that um, the money that we had set aside was just the beginning and that we were going to work through um, additional funds at that time and that was made clear um, it was consistent it was a four to one vote to go in that direction so that's why I'm just a little confused of why it is on the request I don't know if you guys were advised to put it back <coughs> on the bond request or if that's something that your board just felt strongly about I, I'm just trying to I'm not understand. gonna tell you what our attorney is advising us <laughs> <laughs> well I, I'm just trying uh, to understand no, how it I'm came kidding. back as it, yeah. um, in, 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 in what we're what we're trying to accomplish is to get Mount Pleasant Middle School replaced. Thirteen five is not going to do it, and we if, made if that. If we're yeah. if we're off, it's not going to do it. Right. If it's on the bond or the potential bond, and you guys have a different plan and come up with the cash, we're going to take the cash and we're going to go run and build a school. Right. The other thing. Um, we're going to our our budget request in April is going to include we're asking you to make the project whole right so you may choose to fund it then and scrap this you may choose to go this direction but the entire time we've been discussing this was to give you all the maximum flexibility that you could have in financing the different needs across the county right that that's and and, and you're right I certainly appreciate that and that's where you know I say that you know we had basically this discussion over a month ago and 
this board decided and i know that for you guys it doesn't matter if it's you know bond money or if it's cash you know for your purposes you're just trying to accomplish you know uh what you can is getting the new school but you know this board gave direction uh to move forward with the cash option so that's why i am concerned of why this is back on here so you know as i said i just was curious if you were advised one way or the other um to request this or if it was I'm just trying to get to the bottom of that. Well, well, uh, um, we we've taken the two million and we're 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 moving forward. That you gave us. You right. didn't give us thirteen five. Right. You gave us two. But we have it. Well, know, I understand right. that, but we don't have it. Right. So, to make the project whole, again, we're going we're going to formally ask for it in our budget request. Right. I I don't know if you have it or not. If you don't have it. I can't let this opportunity go by because then now I'm 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 done again for until next April. Right. So Okay. Do you have the seventeen point five million for the new elementary school? Has that been transferred to you? That hasn't been either, right? Because the bills come to us and we pay them directly. Uh I, yeah. Okay. So well, you would uh, never get this thirteen point five million. It's going to be paid out directly. So why don't you have the new elementary school on here? Could I just offer a perspective? We, we can't bid a public project without having all the money sort of in the bank, right. in, a, in a place where That's we can immediately pay for it. That's it's against the law. So therefore, although we really enjoy the idea of having a portion of the school, we can't put it out on a, in a bidding fashion until we have the whole amount. That, that's the restrictions. Right. But, and but just to clarify this for you, they do not physically receive that money. It stays in our bank account, but the board voted to move that money into a capital project fund, and it's the same as them having it in their hands. We just pay the bills, and it stays in our hands. But that money has been moved to a construction capital project fund, prepared for him to bid and do everything that he needs to do. Has, has Mount Pleasant not been done that? $2 million the board voted, excuse me, up to $2 million the board right. voted to move that money over to the construction fund and that money has also been moved and it's in a different department within that same fund but the board did not make a motion to move any more money than that and right now we could do we could go ahead and spend the two million dollars on the I mean that we're getting ready to do for our architecturals however until we have the money those plans, once they're complete, will sit on the shelf until there's enough money to complete the school, the school. And we cannot go to bid until we have at least a good faith amount of money that we believe will complete the project. So we will not be able to go to bid in the near future because we do not have the money to be able to bid with. And, but we're going ahead with the $2 million in hopes <coughs> that you'll come up with some of the other money so that we can bid the project. But um, right we back. anticipate it'll take about six to, six to eight months to get the the um, design work done and at that point then we'll be sitting with a sh with a project ready to go and no money to, to fund it right. from what I understand is that the last meeting we had where we moved the money to the capital reserve fund so it was going to take about 10 months for you guys to come back with the plans um, that's what I understand and as I said I you know I understand I think we made it clear in this board um, made it clear that you know this was the beginning and I think it was a commitment on our behalf to move forward with that project so um, well, and, and you know I understand that you're concerned with the 13.5 million dollar number and as I said that was a stepping stone to where we're gonna you know uh, get to so um, yeah I think that we made that commitment over a month ago the, the problem well, I guess Go ahead, Blake. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, I, it, we can certainly plan it. That, that's not the problem, Chris, and we're doing that. Uh, but I, I guess the, if we have half the money, if we have three quarters of the money, if we have 90% of the money, it's still not sufficient for us to put the project on the street. And that's all we're saying. We, I, you I know, understand we'll, what we'll you're We'll certainly saying. proceed with the design documentation right. and all that. Right. Uh, but but we, that's, our, we that's our part to worry about. Uh, I so. agree. And, and we're, we're just saying we're, we'll be more than happy to spend the money when we get it, but we just can't do the physical bidding of it. I understand that. Until. Right. So we're, we're proceeding as directed, but right. we'll, okay. we'll hit a wall at some point. That's okay. all. And yeah. then I do want to ask about well, the... Can I make one more comment? Sure. And, and well before you were here and before I was here, there was a commitment made to those people too eight years ago that they were going to get a new school. 
and it still hadn't happened. Right. So, and there were a lot of people then that said, well, we have a commitment. Well, we've got $2 million is the way that we're looking at it, and we're going to be asking you formally for, for, the, for the rest. How you come up with it, <coughs> and that's up to you guys. Right, exactly. I want to ask about the Glenn Center. Uh, the, I guess it says the elevator towers, ADAD, and elect electrical. What programs do you have at the Glenn Center? What's currently going on there? Just so I have an understanding. Sure. The Glenn Center is currently the opportunity school, middle school and high school, and that's where uh, students that uh, cannot finish at their normal traditional school for various reasons can t attend uh, the opportunity school. Is there a better way to define that? Um, we also have the technology center that's there. What what we're looking at? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, English as a second language program is there and some other, I think, office. Um, the technology area takes up a lot of space out there. What we're talking about here for elevators and ADA and electrical is work that we would have to do no matter what goes on there in the, in the future. There's three stories, you know, two that you can't use because you can't get up there, they're not accessible. If we would want to do some other type of program there, we've kicked around an arts magnet. Uh, the, the, the Cabarrus Education Foundation has come to us on a couple different occasions of wanting to repurpose that building since it's the old Concord High School, uh, of trying to figure out different things that we can do. Anything that ever goes on there, these three things are going to have to take place. So this doesn't really repurpose the building, but it takes care of something we know we're going to have to do. We have currently engaged an architect to help us plan and figure out how and what we want to do with the building, building to reprogram it and repurpose it. Um, and that's coming sometime time later. And it may be something we want to do, or we may look at it and say, well, gosh, we can't do that, or it's too expensive, or whatever the case may be. But if by the time, if, if this is on the bond, by the time this would hit and these funds would be available, we'd have a really good idea of what we want to do there to be able to take this. But these, are, these things are going to have to happen regardless. couple questions just to clarify my math a little bit back on the the Mount Pleasant middle school your figure that you've got included on here a combination of cash and bonds is 22 million right yes yes sir. and and we had talked about 13 5 which we gave two already that got us down to 11 5 correct and you you were saying eight eight million a while ago. I'm getting a difference of ten point five. Maybe I'm. It, it could be my math. But, uh, the, yeah, the the twenty two million includes the two that we already have. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's okay. right. That's that 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 would that would be the difference. Um, <clears throat> so my question is to you, to Mr. Whitkey, any of you. Um, can you build a middle school in Mount Pleasant for that amount of money? For, for 22 million 13.5 for 13.5 right no. no but I'll take that back we could I can't tell you what it's gonna look like and it may only be a couple hundred students so could we I, not to the level that I think the people in Mount Pleasant deserve and are envisioning and not to the level that our board's commitment would be the answer to that would be no uh-huh um, which which is what the funding is at currently which I'm I'm assuming that's why it's on this list because you don't have enough money to build the school that you need to build um, the um, when when I visited Mount Pleasant um, several weeks ago um, and it was a parents group PTA a combination of of elementary parents whose students would be moving up to the middle school as well as some that were currently there um, and they made a presentation about some of the needs of the schools, um, some of the issues that they were dealing with there. Um, a couple of them in particular, one of them was the, um, the deteriorating seating in the stadium there, the football stadium. Another was the condition of the, uh, I think the press box there, some roofing issues and other things. Uh, and there, there were a couple other items that fell in that category as well as um, some discussion about the importance of the athletic fields 
that currently exist at, at that school. And I just wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about are any of those things included in this figure, like the stadium seating, the press box, and what would the imp would there be any impact on those existing athletic fields there when this project happens? Well, I can tell you that uh, the active living and parks department is they, they use those fields a lot. Those fields are very important to the, the citizens of Mount Pleasant. We will we are going to try to design the new school in such a way that not only do the school fields on one side stay, but the ones on the other side stay to some degree. Somehow, some way, we're going to have to try to fit a school in there with loading and unloading with buses and, and, and ingress and egress. The, we're hoping that the number will include being able to address those needs as we see fit or as it, it, it you know, comes to fruition with the... The 22 million yes. number. Yes. So, in other words, as we go through the design development phase with the architect and we can see where we're going and, and how it's shaping out, well, does that do... Can we then now address the things are, that, that are happening at the stadium? Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind, that's the only middle school that has concrete bleachers. It's right. They're exactly like Northwest Cabarrus High School that we had to do a pretty substantial structural repair on uh, I think that was two years ago that yep. we did that, um, and so they've they've they're probably not in the in the, in the best shape. It's been a been a while since uh, I was there, um, mm -hmm. but uh, we are hoping to be able to address that. The fields and their use is very important to us. I'm 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 happy that Cabarrus County Schools has middle school sports. You know, some counties don't. Some people have to pay for them with an extra fee. We have them. We get a lot of benefit out of them. Hickory Ridge Middle has has nice fields. Northwest has fields. Uh, actually, we're, we're there we're trying to do some improvement on those. But those other schools have them. It would it, we we can't we can't allow the new school to take over the fields where they then don't don't have them. Uh, we have a school that doesn't, and it's 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 a tough nut to crack uh, mm -hmm. to try to make it fair and equitable. Right. So and that that and I really didn't know, and and I knew that that was the was a concern of some of the folks that in that community um, but we would have to come up to a higher level of funding to both build the school and take care of some of these other other needs and I'm imagining that that would probably be on the end of the list um, pending what your bids would come in for the actual construction um, Clearly, the the academic piece is what's going to come first. Right. But there, you, you reach a point where you can value engineer, or you can you can have trade-offs. And and it, at some point in time, we we hope that the number covers everything the way that we want to do it, and, and not overdone, but you know consistent with what we think Cabarrus County Schools, uh, what our standard is. Um, and so that that I. You know, I guess I, has, I hesitate to say that it comes last, mm -hmm. but as you're moving through the project and you're prioritizing, you know, you have to think academics first, right. and then we'll, we'll, we'll move out from, from there. Right. Well, and, and I understand what you're saying, and, and my comment to those folks that I have talked to has been, you deserve a school in Mount Pleasant that is comparable to other facilities throughout Cabarrus County and nothing less. And, and I think that's what you're proposing. We might rethink the roof. <laughs> I will. Commissioner Morris. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> I haven't seen conclusive evidence of that, but. Uh, um, I was the, just the, trying to lighten the mood a little. <laughs> in here. I appreciate you, <laughs> If I could also mention, Commissioner uh, Morris, the, um, <clears throat> the roofing projects we're aware of, uh, we hope to address some of that this summer through our own funding. Uh, how, how far we go with that is always limited by all the other needs at the time, but, right. but we do, uh, we're very much aware of the, uh, the condition of the roofs and we right. will be doing some of that work ourselves. So. Yeah, which, which might include that press box they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so that, that may be, be dealt with separately. Mm -hmm. um, um, do, you, do you have any details on the, 
you know, what, what I'm looking at these projects, you know, if, if, if we're going to put this on a, on a bond referendum and give the, the voters and the taxpayers an opportunity to express their opinion and to, to tell us whether this is the direction they want us to go or not, um, the, the, the geography of these projects, as, as we've got a significant project in Kannapolis that is definitely needed, um, this project in Mount Pleasant, which is definitely needed. Um, you know, we've got, I, you know, I'm just thinking out loud as to the distribution throughout the county that, that we, we have something that's attractive to, to all of our citizens. Um, and, and I just wondered if you had any details on Coltrum Webb Elementary, um, or is that just kind of general at this point? And I know that's a very old facility. And it, it is very old. Um, I, I, and, and there again, we have engaged a, a, a firm to help us with the reprogramming and repurposing of that. We know beyond the shadow of a doubt there's a building that needs to be completely torn down and taken, you know, gone, de 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 demolished. Um, so that, to, to, to say it's going to be X number of feet or X number of stories, I, I, I'm not sure we're, we're at the level of that detail. Right. We know it's something because of the STEM program. We're excited about what's right. happening at the school. We're excited that kids are coming to Concord to go to school in the middle of, uh, in a neighborhood setting, a neighborhood type school. Um, but so it, it, it's, a, it's a general idea of what we think it's probably gonna take to get us where we wanna go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, if funding were available in additional stuff. And this study you've already embarked upon. Yes. yes, sir. Yes. And to that end, we're working with the city of Concord right now to reroute some of the um, sanitary sewer around the school so that we can proceed with whatever renovations that we were allowed to get through the bond. But that was one of the first things that had to be accomplished and that's what we're in the process of working with the city of Concord right now on drawing the plans and getting the rerouting done which uh, we hope to have accomplished in the next year or so. Is that Definitely. correct? Yes. Right. And on the um, the Glenn Center, um, this, um, to bring that into compliance from an ADA and electrical standpoint, would give you additional capacity there, some space that exists that you're not able to use, is that? We think the facility as a whole is underutilized. For the uh -huh. size that it is, and, and we, we, we've done a little bit of poking around structurally, and an engineer has said structurally, we think it's fairly solid. The bones, as 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 it were, are 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 usable and can can be repurposed. So we're not currently. I don't want to make the impression that we're currently out of some sort of compliance because we're using the building. We, we're right. we're fine for what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We think there's an opportunity to do more for the citizens of Cabarrus County and Concord to have something else at that facility. And it makes it to us it makes sense to go ahead and address items that we know we're going to have to do sometime in the future. So, uh, you know, the the thing that has been talked about the most is an arts magnet program because of the stage uh, and the facility that's already there mm -hmm. is is unlike anything that, that that we've seen or that got built in any other school here mm -hmm. since then. Right. Um, right. And so that's been discussed. Our board has not made a, a decision on that. I'm not sure we all agree exactly what, what you know, the Glenn Center would, would look like. Uh, we do know there's support in, in Concord to, to do something with that facility. And we're sensitive to that because I, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's worth exploring. Um, right. But h how and, and, and what it looks like, it, it's, it's a little hard to say. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly agree that there's historical significance to that structure. And if it's, if its bones are good and it's, it's, it's healthy, I think if we can repurpose that, it's a, it's a good thing to do. Uh, we hear a lot of discussion about various programs that you have. And right now it escapes me, the one you said that was at the Glenn Center. It, opportunity center you know I think that we don't always understand or I don't always understand what those mean but when I have an opportunity to go out to the schools and and see some of the programs that that you guys are doing now and I, th I think it ties in extremely well with what Dr. Spalding had said earlier um, you know our school system is offering more opportunities to different kinds of students than than we in, in my to my knowledge ever have in the past I think that's a really positive thing um, uh, 
was, as you know, at the Performance Learning Center uh, for a, a luncheon yesterday and had an opportunity to hear some of those students talk about what that program had meant to them and how it had changed their path. Uh, they were going down uh, a path in high school where they were not excelling and performing well. Uh, and, and that change uh, had made a tremendous difference for them. Um, and and I've, I've heard that about several other programs. So, you know, the, what you're doing there at the Glenn Center, I'm sure, is, is another one of those avenues um, that, that are important. You know, when I, when I was in high school, we didn't have those choices. Um, if, you, if you did well, then you went ahead and graduated. If you didn't, you, you, you dropped out of school and went to work in the mill. Right. Uh, and, and we provide so many more opportunities now. And, and so I think these are worthy things to look at. But um, uh, Central Cabarrus, uh, the items you've got on here, we had some discussion about, about that facility earlier in, in the year. Um, is this kind of a refurbishing plan or? Uh, a little bit of both. It's no actually, real additional space. Well, it will. What, what we're recommending now, having looked at that plan and, and the overall master plan for the school down the road, the idea of staying on that property makes good sense. And the, the difficulty with the auditorium and the um, uh, cafeteria and kitchen and all is that they're sort of landlocked where they're located in the buildings. They're too small, much too small. Uh, for the number of students we have in, in the high school. And so the idea is that we're going to suggest placing a new, if you will, for now, a standalone building that'll contain a new auditorium, contain a new cafeteria with food service uh, capacity in it. And that will be, in effect, the initial start of the new, ultimately the replacement facility okay. uh, that will take many phases, we know. But, but we need that, and, and one of the benefits is that as a standalone, we can control energy use in that building. Uh, it can be available for events where now, if we have people coming into the school to attend an auditorium event or uh, an evening uh, uh, meal, we're literally running the entire school system because uh, we just don't have those controls and those abilities. Whereas in this, in this situation, we would. Mm -hmm. But it really becomes the, foot, the, the start of the footprint of the ultimate replacement right. facility. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. I think. I think that's all the questions we have time to address. I could go on, but I'll stop. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to just ask one. We can sit here and talk numbers all night long, but until you bid these projects out, you don't have a true cost. Yes, sir. Correct? Absolutely. And that depends on the, it may be more. It's probably not going to be less than it was two or three years ago. Materials have all gone up. Labor's gone up. And it's hard to sit here and project a cost next year or the year after but it's going to, it's going to take the bid to actually know right that's correct and we'll reiterate we can't bid unless the project has been funded that's right and then that's where we hope what you funded comes in over what we bid and we give that money back to you um do you know offhand at Central Caveras the capa current capacity of the auditorium that they have? It's 317 seats. So it's, it's less than, a, well, far less than a grade uh, of student, or a great set of students uh, right now. And it, it, to my knowledge, it's the smallest uh, of all those venues throughout the high schools. It's the smallest one. Um, I think most of you ask questions on each of the projects. I think you. Commissioner Morris, I think you went through all of them. So, um, are there any other questions of Cabarrus County Schools at this time? Yes, Chris. I have one I'm question sorry. too. Go I just got a real quick question. In the design phase for the Mount Pleasant Middle School, would there be an opportunity? You know, if if we build the school at 700 capacity, you know, <coughs> you said in 2007, you know, that this board and uh, county management was requesting a 1,200 capacity uh, school. Would there be an opportunity to add? additions to that school add wings will it be designed in that manner where you can expand on that property well the the what we're currently trying to accomplish I, I we we think and again mr. wiki and I disagree on this which is what well, that makes what that's what makes getting up and going to work fine that's yeah right. um, I, the numbers based on the replacement of 700 <laughs> 
it makes some sense to add to the core, as we've talked about, and build it a core greater than that at, say, 800 maybe, maybe you call it 900, and only you know, have the capacity at seven. It's going to be driven by where we think the, the number is in internal discussion. ORED says it's not going to grow. So I'm hard pressed to believe we need to build something for growth. We've missed it. We've been pretty good on some projects, but we've missed it both ways. We missed it at Bethel. You know, we missed it one way at Bethel, and we missed it at Fur the other way. Within a year and a half, we were back over here asking you for 200 more seats. Well, that's the most expensive seats we can build. The, yep. you got to remobilize and start from scratch and do the drawings and the engineering. <laughs> you know, it's a lot cheaper to do that up, up front. But again, we're, we're, we're trying to navigate that, and, and you know, we're not, we, we certainly don't have, the, have it cornered on getting it right all the time because, you know, we, we, a, a lot of schools we have done right, but there's two examples where on both sides we didn't know. So we hope to be able to, within the number that we're asking for, at least have some room to grow. I think if you add, you have it where maybe you have a, a, an extra 100 students, that's probably the, the way to go so you can accomplish in case the study's wrong. Or if, like I said today, I was told they have an apartment complex down there now that, that I assume is in the War Ed study. But, you know, so I think that's, that's a conversation we have with the architect as we move forward. Um, and then you, you, you kind of look. And he's doing projections. He or she is doing projections based on size and cost and the current climate and the current market to then see you know, where we think we're going to hit. My question for you, Blake, was um, that as you've explained this list, it's sort of the worst case scenario list for a bond because you want to be uh, ultra conservative um, in terms of making sure that your, all of your potential needs are met. Um, and so I'm curious about the allocation of cash funds. You have $7.9 million allocated across your projects. And as I look through all of our five-year plans, all of the plans except for the cash for school plans does not have $7.9 million available uh, in the next three years. So where do you think that cash will come from? I think that's for, for you guys to decide. You're going to tell us which projects you're going to do and which ones you're not going to do and how you fund it is is 100 percent up to you guys we're here to tell you what the needs of the schools are right so i if if that's the case why did you break it out between bond and cash if that's we, we the were case? asked to do that okay so, so our board did not ask you to do that so who asked you to do that uh, it's my understanding that the county manager I did. asked us to do that. i okay. did okay so because the reason why is if we can avoid borrowing money for design or borrowing money for furniture on the back end then it makes sense to not borrow it and pay that off. If you can use cash to do it, then it makes sense to do that. Well, it does, but, but none of the plans other than the cash for school plans has this cash available. I'm not sure what you're referring to, this cash per school plan. The if plan you're referring C. to your plan C, yeah. you're, you're correct. Right. But there was three other plans that were, were, that were given to you at the retreat. Yes. Okay. And during, this, <coughs> during that time, there is another plan in there. The plan D offered another option where they were gonna, you would start accumulating cash. It did, but it did not have $7.9 million available at the time of the funding of these projects. And, and so, and that was, one of them had 2.5 million, one of them had, the other one had 2.5 million, and one of them had 6.4 million. So I don't know where, where, they, would, where they would find that, in the, in the plan that was available, um, that, that, that was plan. for all of the schools. It wasn't just for Cabarrus County. So um, 6.4 million is not 7.9. And, and so I just, from a worst case scenario, this is not planning for a worst case scenario. Um, let, let me just tell you very bluntly what my concern is. My number one concern is that the money for Mount Pleasant stay allocated to Mount Pleasant. And I wanna ask you as a school board, are you willing to guarantee 100% that you will not ask for that cash in this budget cycle to pay for other things other than Mount Pleasant Middle School. We're going to formally, in our budget request in April, ask you to fully fund Mount Pleasant Middle School. Okay, but that's not my that's not an answer to my question. Are you willing to 100% guarantee to the people of Mount Pleasant that you are not going to ask for that cash to be um, used for another project other than Mount Pleasant Middle School? I'm not sure what part of my answer was vague. 
you you said you your answer was non responsive to my question you gave me an answer to a different question than the question that i a asked we're I going to ask for 22 million dollars to fund mount pleasant middle school in april in our, no our formal budget request okay and are we, you we willing can't then spend it on something else I'm just asking you, are you willing to guarantee 100% for the people of Mount Pleasant that you are not going to ask to use that $13.5 million for a project other than Mount Pleasant Middle School? When I'm asked three times the same question and I don't have a different answer, there's, there's something else going on here. I don't understand what's vague about my answer. Okay. The money that you guys are, that we're going to ask for, that we hope that you give us to tack on to the thirteen five that you, you, you set aside to equal 22 million is going to replace Mount Pleasant Middle School. That is a yes or no question. Are you willing to guarantee that to the people of Mount Pleasant or are you not? I, I, I'm not gonna be backdoored into something I don't, if I don't understand your question, then rephrase it. Okay. I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand where you're going with this guarantee. Our, our board is promising Mount Pleasant that we're asking for funds to replace that school of $22 million. If you fund it, that's what we're going to do. We can't do anything else with that. Well, I don't think we're going to fund $22 million. I think that if we funded it, we would fund something less based on the conversations that we've had tonight. So my question to you again is, um, are, I, I just want to make sure that that money is going to be there. What I don't want to have happen and what the people from Mount Pleasant have called me in the last day and told me is we don't want the $13.5 million spent on something else and for us to be put on the bond. Now, can you guarantee to them that's not going to happen? If you fund the school, then you have the ability to pull it off the bond. It's not my call. If you ask for the cash and then the cash gets spent on something else, then they will have to be on the bond. If it gets spent on something else, then you've spent it and not us. We don't get to spend it on what we want to spend it on. Listen, if you're not willing to guarantee it, I fully understand. But the people of Mount Pleasant will understand that you're not willing to guarantee it. And that's okay with me. I wanted to make sure that I asked the question because I wanted to make sure that we were on record whether you would guarantee that you, the money was going to be there or not. So if you're not willing to guarantee well, it, that's okay. May I, I speak? Mr. Osterreich, in answer to your question, you're $8 million short. So you can't guarantee something that you don't have to guarantee. You put $13.5 million in a kitty, and we're going to use $2 million of it to do design work. That's all we can do. We can't go out for bid until you give us another $8 million to make this project whole, and we still won't know until we have that money in the bank to go out for bid whether that's even a viable number. What you're trying to do is trap us into making a commitment to something that we can't make a commitment to because we don't have the money to make the commitment. Okay. Are there any other questions? Do you have anything? Can I ask? Um, uh, thank you all very much, mm -hmm. and thank you to everybody that's been with us so far this evening. Um, can I ask that we take a 10 or 15 minute break, commissioners, and then come back?